playing with breakfast while I'm yawning You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning Lord forgive me, I can't take things slowly I'm going on them once I get going She's trying to take it all off of me Trying to stay real close to me I gotta catch myself, I can't blame myself I need to take it easy, easy, easy all right, all right. If everyone can take a seat. Thank you so much for joining us. We know it's the end. It's almost the end of summer. Like the end of summer. I mean, not really the end of summer, but you know, once August goes, it's like, ugh. This is our last event of the summer, though, because our next one's in October. True. So True. Yeah. Fall down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ignore me, y'all. We just want to say thank you again to our sponsors, Corridor and Greenberg Trawrig. Remember that other R in there, Trawrig. Um, both are great as a founder. If you're looking for legal advice, Greenberg Trawrig, and also helping with your documents. If you're looking to create your MVP, who's a founder in here? All Ooh, right. Great Woo. show of hands. So, and if you're a founder, um, Corridor is also great for that MVP development or any future development. So, and they were responsible for the beer, which was brought in over there, just so you know. Yeah, so you also can still so, make a beer run within the room. They make it just possible FYI. for us. So how many people is this your first time to what? this event? Put a hand. Wow. So I think we need to cover some basis. Yeah. Some basics. So first of all, we have to introduce ourselves. We were going to do that anyway, <laughs> just FYI. Uh, I'm your host, Christian Ross. And I am Kristen Slink. I know, Christian and Kristen. We couldn't get any more confusing. It's all good, though. C, K, just FYI. So just yell out C or K, and we'll know what you're talking about. But we're so excited that you're here with us in Atlanta Tech Village. I know this may be your first time here. Who is it the first time at Atlanta Tech Village? Raise your hand. All right. Yeah. Well, just FYI, um, this has been here now for almost 10 years, actually yeah. 10 years now. And um, it's a great place if you're a founder to look for community. There's a lot of great events, even if you're not a member here. But it is specifically for startups that are tech-based and tech-focused that can work out of here. And there have been a lot of unicorns that have come out of here. So Salesforce came out of here. Calendly, you probably use Calendly, has come right out of here. Um, There's so many amazing Atlanta companies, prize picks that just graduated, that have worked out of here, grown, and went off to green pastures. So we want to thank Atlanta Tech Village for being our perpetual sponsor. Yes, thank you for having us. <clears throat> so this event is really exciting because it involves a lot of you all. So a lot of times in pitch competitions, someone will come up, there's a series of judges, those judges get to ask all the questions, and then there's some kind of winner. Here, you all get to ask the questions. So as you're listening to the pitches, I want you to keep in mind what kind of questions come up for you, because the better questions you can ask the founders, the more prepared they're going to be in order to answer the questions or figure out things that maybe they haven't thought of before. So it's really powerful to be able to be part of that experience. So do not be shy. If you have any questions, when we open it up for them, raise your hand, we'll call on you, and it'll be lovely. And again, like these founders are coming up here and pitching. It takes a lot to get up yeah. and tell your story and tell people about your product and say, here, this is it. So. Give it up for our founders. We have our first one that will be approaching the stage, Mr. Cesar Flores with Hearthmates. Woo! This is a bigger. Oh, yeah. I was almost about to sing to y'all, but I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm not going to do it tonight. Hi. Hi, my name is Cesar Flores, and I am the founder and CEO of Hearthmates, the future of shared housing search. When I was in college, living with roommates was about exploring my independence. Exploring my independence. There we go. Uh, living with roommates was about exploring with my independence and making lifelong connections. But today, 
it's a requirement. But today, yeah, today it's a requirement. Uh, an anemic uh, uh, wages, skyrocketing uh, lending rates, and unattainable housing prices have forced millennials out of the housing market. And living independently is ideal. Uh, while living independently is ideal, it's completely unattainable. Uh, We'll just keep moving. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, so here's the problem. Uh, even in the age of crypto, AR, and ChatGPT, finding a roommate today is no easier than it was when our parents were living, were circling ads in newspapers. Uh, Facebook groups are filled with spam and fraudsters trying to take your money, and other apps are uh, demanding upfront payment for services that just don't work. Uh, when, I, when I went back to grad school full time, I tried, to, I tried to rent out rooms in my house for spare cash, but after three months, uh, endless work and over $100 in ads, I still hadn't found a roommate. And I'm not alone. Of the over 27 million moves that happen in the US every year, only 11% of shared housing seekers will find their accommodations within the first week. And the rest are doomed to spend over eight hours a week on their search for upwards of a month. That's why I started Hearthmates. It's a mobile app for roommate matchmaking and collaborative housing search. We help you find the right roommate right now. And here's how. Signing up for Heartmates is easy. You just sign in with your mobile number. And importantly, we don't allow any virtual numbers like those from Google Voice and the like. So you can be, feel secure that you are talking to a real person. So to get started searching, we just need to add a few personal details, add a few personal details on our uh, profile before we move on to uh, our search. Uh, search preferences, which is where all the magic happens. You can, of course, uh, add your basic uh, search constraints like affordability or move-in availability. But here's where things get interesting. What if I'm new to town? What then? Well, Previously, you would have to manage this type of search across dozens of tabs on your browser. But with Hearthmates, you just tell us where the places are that matter, you, matter to you the most, and we will find you not only the best place to live, but also, but also, uh, but, but also uh, rank your roommate results accordingly. So um, the great thing about uh, Hearthmates is that it is a mobile-first experience, and it's very familiar. So if you've ever used a modern dating app, you already know how to use us. And in a few swipes, we've already found a match. And now we can get to chatting to get to know each other and also plan our move together. So you might be asking, how much is this all going to cost me? Well, our app is free to use, but we also offer uh, premium add-ons that ensure that uh, you get full access to all your curated results and a few extras to help ensure that you find the right roommate right now. So luckily for us, with the market need being so great, it's mostly just about awareness, building awareness. And we've already started making inroads on that effort. In two years, our Facebook group for roommates has exploded to over 59,000 members. And that's led to over 700 signups for our app. And with the market so heavily weighted to millennials and Gen Z adults, we also have a clear path 
to reach our customers in the metro areas where they need us the most, uh, both through uh, brand ambassadorship programs on campuses, as well as branded social uh, groups, uh, uh, branded social groups uh, for uh, young professionals. So you can sign up to test our app using the QR code there. And we hope to hear from you soon and take your questions. All right, who has some questions? And I'll let you call on it and then please repeat the question. Hello. How much does the service cost? The question was how much does the service cost? The service is freemium, so it's free to use. <clears throat> but you will be rate limited on your results, so you'll only get uh, a few uh, curated results. And then um, because the need um, time is really important in this, you usually only have a couple of weeks to make your accommodations, um, it really incentivizes people to switch over to the subscription. So the app will be nationwide, but we are only going to... Oh, the question was, um, where is it available? Um, is it going to be nationwide? Uh, and the answer is uh, the, the plans will for, be for um, general availability in the U.S., but we're actually going to concentrate our initial launch here in Atlanta, um, and that's just to make uh, uh, provide us the best chance to actually get a foothold in, 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 the, in Atlanta. Thank you. Yes. You're right. Uh, yes. Um, Repeat the, question. the question is, uh, are we prioritizing safety? And the answer is yes. Um, initially, we only are uh, filtering out uh, spam and fake accounts. Um, I have a background in um, InfoSec, so it is an important component of it. And we're starting by just limiting fake, fake accounts for now. But there are also uh, plans for um, background checks and credit checks. Yes, you over there, and we'll get to you. Uh, the question is about the chat functionality. Is it just text, uh, or do we have additional features? Um, in our initial launch, we're focusing just on um, text chat, um, but uh, we have this concept of roommate groups. Uh, which is an expanded, enhanced chat that has the ability to share, uh, share and comment on photos within the group of your roommates so that you can actually track your uh, roommate search better uh, and manage it across different people that are participating in that decision process. Uh, you over there. Right, so uh, the question is about um, what are our competitors like? What's that landscape like? Uh, what is the market opportunity? Um, for us, well, uh, our biggest competitor is actually Facebook groups. Um, and part of the reason why is because on the mobile side, as we kind of mentioned, um, a lot of the apps are very janky. Um, they demand these uh, almost abusive kind of monetization policies where you have to pay to even look at your messages. And then because they don't um, filter out spam, then you just leads to disappointment. Um, so really, most people are kind of forced into Facebook groups. But Facebook groups is not great. Um, your listings get buried. Uh, you're also talking to people that don't exist. It's not great. So it's really hard to kind of directly compare our competitors in that sense, because on the mobile side, they haven't really quite penetrated for reasons that I just mentioned. And then for Facebook groups, you know, they're, that's not their business. So here, um, we're actually just kind of paving the way. One more question. Uh, yes, you all the way in the back. Yes. 
There was no one behind you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the question is about uh, what is our differentiator? It seems like uh, roommate chat is, the, is, the, is the, that key component, but uh, we're not really highlighting it here in the presentation. Um, and, and you are right, that, that's where we're leading. Um, uh, we believe that uh, collaborative decision making is what's going to keep people on the platform uh, for the lifetime of their roommate search. But as for our MVP, we're mostly focusing in our initial launch on just matching people and giving them the option to kind of hackishly figure, you know, uh, collaborate over uh, chat. Um, but then in our next uh, release, uh, post launch, then we will also expand that feature set yeah. to actually drive home that. All right, thank you, thank you. Caesar. Round of applause. <laughs> All right, so while we wait for our next company to come up, we want to get some. And thank you for your questions because, again, these help founders think through things and see like what makes it good when it goes to market or if they're already in the market, how does it make it better? So keep your questions coming. Um, but we have some really cool laptop or just other places you want to put stickers at. Find them. <laughs> okay. So what Got made you stickers. come here today? <laughs> what made you come here today? Oh, I have my own company and I would love to know how to pitch it better as well. Nice. Yeah. All right. What's your company? Here you get a sticker. <laughs> Alexander Media. Alexander Media. All right. Well, look, this is great to learn from. All right, well, we have, wow, they're fast, guys. They're really Woo! fast. Let's give it up for Jack and Brad from Colbert. Can you take two? Oh, yeah, here. Thanks. Thank you. Fast. Great. Perfect. All right. Cool. Thank you so much, guys, for having us. I am Brad. This is Jack, and we are Colbert. And this is Jill. Jill is an HR professional. She's at a rapidly growing company, and she's looking for HR solutions to help her company's growth. So where does she go? She goes to Google. She looks for HR software, and she clicks the first link she sees, and she lands on a landing page like this with this magical request a demo button, right? We've all seen this. So of course, what she do? clicks it. She comes here to this landing page. She's got to fill out all this information. It looks like this. You guys have seen them. Or maybe it looks like this. Or this, they're a dime a dozen. There are millions of these requested demo landing pages. And I'm going to tell you why all of these are terrible. They suck. The reason they suck is because even when Jill fills out this landing page, she has to wait for a salesperson to engage her. They go back and forth over finding a time to meet. Finally, they agree to meet next Wednesday. But by next Wednesday, what happens? Jill has other priorities come up. She's got to fire people, hire people. She searches competitors, and eventually, by the time the meeting rolls around, she looks at her calendar and she says, you know what, I'm going to cancel that meeting. The opportunity is lost. The salesperson will never talk with her again. So <clears throat> this is not just a problem in HR solution or software sales there. It's a, so it's a software problem across industries. And what's happening is that delays and gaps in the early stage of the sales process create lost momentum when the prospect has interest and there's a big gap until the first conversation takes place. Let's assume, or let's say that I walk down to like an Ace Hardware today and I say, I walk inside and I want to look at lawnmowers. And they say, Brad, that is so great. We love, we'd love to show you all of our best lawnmowers. Come back next Wednesday and we'll show you what we got. That would be really stupid, right? But this is what we do every day in online sales. Every time we shop for software, 
this is what happens. That's where Callbird comes in. So Callbird removes the friction that currently exists in online sales by facilitating instant live video calls in browser between prospects and salespeople. What this does is increase the velocity of the sales cycle, eliminates no-shows, and means no more missed opportunities. And most importantly, it means that conversation happens when the prospect's interest in any given product is at its peak. With Coolbird, you can wrap up a process that previously may have taken 10 days in just one, and maybe even have that demo straight away. One of the ways companies can use Coolbird is by embedding it on their existing request to demo pages. So let's imagine somebody goes to the sales loft page. They're really interested in the product. They go to the request a demo page. What they now have the ability to do is that they can still use that lame book a demo form, but right now someone's available so they can meet now and have that conversation right there. This is great for sales loft because it uh, means that they can reduce some of the steps that they have in their sales process. One of our customers, ProLine, actually replaced their uh, live chat tool that they had, Intercom, with Coolbird. And as you can see down there in the bottom right-hand corner, their founder, AJ, is waving at us. And if you click on him, he'll answer, and you can have a live demo with him or one of his sales team uh, there and then, right in the browser. Another way that you can use Coolbird, which is great for all of you lot in the audience, is by signing up for your own Coolbird URL. As we can see here, Alison has hers, and hers is coolbird.com forward slash Alison. And when somebody presses meet now, in her dashboard, she'll see a call request come in from the Atlanta Tech Village, and she can take that call right there and then. And what we'll also see is that my phone is ringing because I'm taking her calls right now, and uh, I'm notified that somebody is requesting a call. This page can also be used to book a meeting in the future because we integrate with all the leading scheduling solutions. So if Alison is unavailable, you can book a meeting for later. Awesome, beautiful, thank you, Jack. So that's where Callbird is today, but we've got big plans for the future. Imagine if I'm a salesperson working for that HR solution provider that I talked about earlier, and I can see all the visitors on the website at any given time. I can see what they're seeing, how long they've been on the site, what their buying intent is. Maybe I can even see who they are, what company they work for, if they have an open deal in my CRM, and then I can proactively choose to reach out to them and engage them in a meeting rather than waiting for them to fill out a form, right? That's where Callbird is headed. We're asking you to humanize your sales process while everyone else is automating theirs. You can do this by whipping out your phone right now. Everybody take your phone, please. Take a picture of our QR code. You can sign up at callbird.com, reserve your own personalized URL, callbird.com slash your name. And you might still be able to get just your first name. A lot of them are going, but some of them are still there. So go ahead. Thank Questions? You. Thank you. Thanks to the guy who started clapping. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a great question. And a question that we get all the time. The question is, I'm going to repeat the question for you guys. The question is, wouldn't companies need to hire more human resources to keep up with the call volume? The answer is, we hope so. If you're getting enough call volume where, you know, prospects with buying intent are engaging you in video calls to talk about your software, that's, a, that's an activity worth prioritizing, right? So if you've got salespeople, and you know, if you know enterprise salespeople, they're mining LinkedIn, they're sending outbound emails, so on and so forth, they're available to speak. And if they're too busy mining a new prospect rather than taking one that's coming to them and saying, hey, I want to talk, that's a problem. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead, follow up. Brilliant. Yeah, great question. So the question is, how do we deal with AI chatbot, which is obviously super prevalent in the market today? Callbird is very specifically video first, right? There's no chat function on Callbird. My last company, we ripped our chatbot right off our website because we were getting so much poor engagement from it. A lot of bad leads, bad questions. You know, you have to, you know, field it all day. You don't even get their contact info, so on and so forth. Callbird, 
You're going to get less calls, but they're going to be meaningful conversations because the person you're talking to is engaging and putting their collateral on the line by doing live video. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, we're targeting the 10,000 plus, please. Everybody just give us your money. No, um, we're targeting salespeople in general. Oh, oh, the question is, what size of company are we targeting and what's our price point? We're targeting um, sort of SMB sales teams right now. We want to we want to engage with teams, people who have multiple salespeople on their roster such that they can field calls for each other and we can have a constant availability of of call fielding. In terms of price right now, um, this page that you saw earlier, Allison, is totally free. So you can sign up. Uh, we're charging $20 a month per user right now to put the tool on your website or to work in teams to field calls. Yeah, great question. Yeah, go ahead. How does the platform handle call volume? In terms of? Like if there are oh. multiple calls to one person, or if you yeah, go ahead, Sure, so the question is how do we handle multiple calls at the same time? Um, so right now, perhaps we don't handle that all that well, um, but it's certainly something that we're working on very fast as we onboard bigger customers. Um, right now within the dashboard, you see all the calls coming in and every person, when, if they're clicking on like the company wide widget, they'll see all the calls coming in and can then see which calls have been answered. So with our Slack integration, you'll see this call was answered, this call was answered and by whom. And within the dashboard, you can see which calls are active and which ones are incoming. Um, in terms of, you know, if, if it was such high call volume that you couldn't handle it, uh, then maybe the way you're using Callbird doesn't necessarily make that much sense, right? Because you're not going to want to handle too many calls uh, through it. So um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I've missed, Brad? Yeah, just that if you have a lot of calls, that's great news, right? Uh, <laughs> well. Staff up. And then if... If somebody, so, so if somebody does call and I can't field it because Jack and I are both on calls or both in a meeting, right? There's a start, you know, they wait, they ring, it goes to a sorry page and it sends them the right to your Calendly or your calendar solution to book a meeting. So that's super important. Yeah, Stephen. Do you guys operate any analytics on call transfer? Yeah, uh, well, analytics, yes. The, the question is, do we offer any analytics for call transcripts? Uh, transcripts? We definitely have analytics in terms of calls, you know, fielded by person, uh, by user, where the calls are coming from, that sort of thing. Eventually, we'll have CRM integration for that. Um, in terms of transcripting, we don't yet uh, have transcripting available, but that's one of the features on our roadmap to have not only a AI-generated summary of the call, but the actual transcript and sentiment as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to let Jack take this one because he's super international. So, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, so we do handle international. I, I'd say, uh, sorry, the question was how does it work internationally and how do we handle notifications when calls are coming in uh, internationally? So uh, when there's a notification sent out through SMS, we cover most of the world in terms of that SMS going out. Um, but the Slack integration means that you can be absolutely anywhere. And the phone call notifications to work in the vast majority of countries, especially in the developed world. So. All right, let's get our Thank you so much. Thanks. Is this thing All on? All right. All right, it's on. It's on. And I have the one. All right, we have more stickers. What else can we ask while we're waiting? We do. I, well, I had a question for you guys, but it's gone. It's okay. Oh. Um, Thank you guys for your presentation. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Just got a little off. I don't know what ha just happened. Um, I was making sure we had 10. Good, it's up. Our oh, it's quick. <laughs> and we don't even need to give away stickers. We'll have more time in a minute. Well, usually people take forever, but you're really quick. So I think people most would rather watch your pitch. So we are here to welcome Jeremy from Zodiac Games. I remember what I was going to say. Sorry. We're going to reintroduce him. I just wanted to be clear that the reason why we know you probably hear the question is that we have a lot of people watching on YouTube. So we want to make sure that they hear the question as well. So that's why when you hear us yelling, repeat the question, we're not crazy ladies. Okay. We're just making sure they can hear on YouTube. All right. Jeremy from Zodiac Card Games. <laughs> 
Okay, wow. All right. Well, before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about who I am and what I'm doing here. Uh, my name is Jeremy Bertarioni. Uh, about a year ago, I co-founded a startup company called Zodiac Games uh, with a single dream, and it was to create a digital card game. And I'm happy to say that uh, over the summer, I went to India for a few months, and I came back having completed this childhood dream, and we now have a working model of the first digital card game, and it's called Zodiac Games. So I want to introduce myself again. Uh, I used to be a pro Magic the Gathering player. I know that might be shocking to a lot of you, uh, but it is true, because I look so suave. Um, Basically, I love games. I love games so much that when I finished law school, I didn't become a lawyer and went to go be a pro gamer. And that is unironically one of the best choices I ever made. Um, I, I, I mean, truly. I, when I was a pro Magic player, I was on a team called Team Lotus Box, and my, the team owner and I actually um, collaborated and worked together to make this game. He's my other co-founder. Uh, basically, in 2019, I was the number one ranked Magic player in the United States. I was super excited to continue that trend, but in 2020, there was something called the COVID-19 pandemic. You may have heard of it, and um, actually, I didn't get to play in tournaments anymore. So I went on to make my own card game. Let's talk about card games. Card game is called uh, Zodiac. Self-funded, first game. Oh, we made it. It's based on the different uh, symbols in the Zodiac. Who here plays app games, card games? Raise your hand. Okay, you guys are getting exploited. I don't know if you know this, but app games are intent on distracting you, um, sort of begging for your money. Whenever I talk to people about the customer demographics who play app games, uh, they're always talking about tricking customers into buying things. Now, I saw the, those of you who raised your hand for who likes app games. Raise your hand if you like being tricked. Right, so that should have been nobody. <laughs> nobody likes being tricked, right? But people who make app games, they try to do it to customers all the time. So our game, we came up with a new revenue model. We thought, what if people could play against each other, they play our app game, and they make a little bit of money back, right? They get something for all the hours that they put in. Every time they make money, we make money. And so, when it comes to app games, our customer demographics completely changed. Typical app game, you have about three types of customers. There's the free-to-play player. We get money off of them by making them watch ads. There's a small-time spender. They spend about $10 a month. People can count on that. And then there's the whales. People who don't have any self-control spend about $100 a month on app games or more. When you introduce the ability for them to make a little bit of money playing the game that they love, those customer demographics go out the window. Suddenly you have aspirational players. Players who play all day, make a lot of money, and that's great for us because that makes us like, make a lot of money. Our monetization model is pretty simple. Um, we're going to be doing the same thing with our app games that some other ones do. We're going to charge for cosmetics and able to play different decks. But then our step three is the real special sauce. Players can uh, wager real world money in micro stakes gambling against each other. I'll talk a little bit more about how we make that possible a little later on. I want to explain the revenue model real fast because the questions are my favorite part of this presentation and I want to get to those. Basically, if you think about a game tournament in terms of an eight man bracket, I promise this isn't going to be complicated. This is the most intuitive thing in the world. Um, if each of these players put $1 in, and then they play out their tournaments, and you pay everybody equal to the number of wins they have, so if somebody makes one win, they get $1, two wins, $2, three wins, $3, uh, you actually are left with $1 at the end of that. And that dollar goes to us in Zodiac. So because of that very simple revenue model, the more people play our game, the more money we make, and the more people get to make money. Very nice. We're launching in India. Why India? We encourage people to play micro stakes against one another. If you do that in the United States, you're subject to uh, lots of credit card fees. You're losing out to Venmo or Visa or something like that. India wants to go totally paperless. So they have a government subsidized model called Paytm. Uh, we have an alignment, a business alignment with Paytm that allows us to uh, circumvent the small processes. So we're getting 100% of that $1 as opposed to 70 cents of that $1. Good way to think of it. Right now we're in our seed round. We have about $80,000 of the projected $500,000. I'm happy to announce that with that, we've been able to hire a full-time software development team in India. We have them on retainer. Um, we've actually started developing our second game, even though it's a little jumping the shark. Uh, my co-founder is a genius, and you can't really keep him in a box, so he's already working on our second game. Um, and so right now we're in the middle of our seed, running, seed funding round. Seed rounding fund. Did I spell that right? Seed funding round. All right. 
Here's our timeline. Right now, we've uh, already launched a prototype. Right now, we have a working model such that two people can play over the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, after the seed round, we're hoping to get it onto um, servers. Amazon Web Services is what we're going to use so that people can play against each other. And by quarter two of 2024, we're going to have people playing in tournaments that have stakes as high as $1,000 per buy-in. So that's my company. I'm super excited to share it with you all. And I'm ready to go into questions. Plaid in the back. Disconnects with high stakes tournaments was the question. He asked how we handle disconnects in the middle of high stakes tournaments. Um, we do have round timers for every player, similar to a chess clock. Um, if a player's round timer goes down because they disconnected, that would sort of be their own responsibility, but then the player who didn't disconnect is awarded the win for that match. Yeah. Yes. Well, he's asking about what our game dynamics are like if players can get unique items, if we have a gotcha system similar to CSGO crates. Um, again, what we really wanted to move away from was exploitative customer uh, revenue models, right? So, so those work on people want to buy the, the loot box in the hopes that they get something great. And that can be a fun, addicting experience for people. But we think that instead of offering people a fun, addicting experience where they get something that they could maybe get a little money out of. We think that people are instead going to enjoy the experience of playing the game that they love, getting to go home at the end of the day, and they made 15 bucks on their lunch break or something like that. We think that's a, a better model than trying to get them on gotchas, if that makes sense. Yes, sir. Right, the tournaments have a set entry fee, and then that's going to be their stakes. Right, so if they wanted to uh, raise their uh, bets in the middle, they would just play a higher stakes tournament next time. The app game is designed to go fast, so a whole tournament takes about 15 minutes. You can easily accomplish two or three on your lunch break. What was the question? Okay, so the question for that was, are people able to raise or lower the stakes of their bets um, mid-tournament? Sorry about that. Yes, sir. We want to be able to reward our question? good players. Uh, the the, the, the question was, is there a ranking system in the game? What stops a good player from coming in and eating all the little players? We want to reward people for their skill. So um, there isn't a ranking system right now. People are thrown into the great pool of players. We think that actually is going to have good incentives for people to want to get good at the game and play more and more so that they can uh, reap the rewards financially of being better than everyone else. Right. I know I wanted to when I was a Magic the Gathering Pro. Yes, sir. So, one of my, so the question is, what is the regulatory environment in India when it comes to gambling in games, as opposed to the US? One of my tasks when I went to India this summer was to uh, meet our legal team. So I spent a lot of time researching and met with the legal team that we have. Um, their environment, their government is a lot more agile than ours. So they're uh, liable to make um, changes maybe overnight over a small amount of time. Um, but companies that do similar things to ours exist in India and um, go on existing with the help of adept legal teams, uh, which we have one. So that's the answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. <laughs> yes, you first. Yeah. Hi. Great. Mm -hmm. So this was an astrological question. Our game is called Zodiac. I didn't get to spend a lot of time talking to you guys about it. Sorry? Right, I was explaining the question. Okay. So the question is, um, what, what Zodiac are you guys using? Are you using the Western Zodiac or the Hindu Zodiac? So we actually, we did a lot of research, and the Western Zodiac is very popular in India. The people use it all the time and um, talk about it, um, even though they have their own Hindu Zodiac. Our game is sort of based off of these Zodiac characters. There are 12 playable decks. Each one is corresponding to a Zodiac sign. Um, and in our customer discovery, that seemed to pull really well and was really resonant with the audience that we're going for. Yeah, great. And then you had one? Okay, um, I'm actually going to step down because I didn't quite hear that. I'm going to get a little closer to you. I'm sorry about that. Hi, everyone. I'm among you now. Isn't that weird? <laughs> What'd you say? So 
So the question is, what is our unique selling point in comparison to the competitors, and have we considered our exit strategy yet? Um, I can personally assure you that every founder in here has dreamed about their exit strategy, so don't worry about that. Um, we, are, we, we, have a, we have a roadmap towards the exit strategy that shows our projected revenue models and um, what an initial public offering might look like. What we have over our competitors is sort of what I talked about a little bit in the presentation. We're really excited about our revenue model as compared to other app games. We also um, are two former professional players, and we've designed a game that sort of address all of our grievances that we have with card games. So one of the answers to your questions is simply that this is the best game of all time. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, give it up for Zodiac. Well, I'm a whale. I don't Woo! know about you. He said, what was the other one? A whale or a, a small Oh, I'm spender. a free person. Oh, yeah. Okay. Free. Okay. Free for me. <laughs> well. Okay, so we had three pitches this evening. We are about to put up the poll. You guys are choosing the audience favorite this evening. So just to tell you what's on the line, every year, so after uh, there's, I think, six pitches, then people come back. So the audience favorites come back. We actually have one in the back. What's up? <laughs> Merchantshop.ai won the pitch off. So the winner from tonight will go to the pitch off that will be in 2024 so the great thing is is that when you win the pitch off you win a year right here for free at atlanta tech village plus park yeah is, parking is huge which for the record when do we start having to pay for parking everywhere in Atlanta? this is like the new new it's yeah. really annoying yeah. everywhere yeah be careful y'all have your park mobile apps so we're about to put the poll Don't up get booted it's not active yet. You're going to go to slido.com. The code is ATLSV92. You are going to vote for your audience fave this yes, evening. So you are in control. So exciting. All right. Taking this up to the, to the steps. Okay, While we got a waiting. soundtrack too. Yeah. Oh, we have music. Thank you. I was like, where's the music tonight? All right, guys, the poll is activated. Get a great roommate, have your sales team on call, or play a game. Let's go. I want to watch. Is it letting you guys vote? Good. So you vote. Okay. Let me do a young refresh. All right. There we go. There we okay. go. There we go. <laughs> Freaking out. I saw zero, zero, zero. I was like, wait a minute. Someone's got to be voting tonight. Yeah. All right, guys. While we're finishing up the poll, take a couple. We have a few dream bigger. Who here has a dream? A big dream. A big dream. Big dream. I like how high she raised her hand. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good reminder. Y'all, I yes. have this in my bathroom. Dream bigger. So that when I'm like brushing my teeth, I'm like, dream girl. Dream. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, you went all the way back there. There you go. All right. We have five, four, three, two, one. And one. Woo, Colbert, congratulations. Look around, it's me and my Congratulations, you will be going to the pitch off. We appreciate you. And guys, we will see you October 30th. We so appreciate we you guys being here. Our selfie. Oh, yeah, we usually have our selfie. Phone? Hold on. Stay right there. It's a thing we do. And you're in the selfie. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Let's roll. Oh, yeah, that's you know that we do it one day. You know that I'm gonna be Everybody smile. <laughs> have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming. And thanks for anyone who tuned in. Yes, thank you, YouTube. 
you all in your feelings, feelings. I'm crazy, I'm swearing, I'm daring, your man staring. I just entered the country with derringers, cause them Karens just turned into terrorists. We was on stop mode. 